whole point in doing this series is there's possibilities, right? There's a lot of possibilities out there and so many options. And we just want you guys to think more on a proactive, preventative kind of a mindset rather than just waiting for something to happen and then have to be reactive mm -hmm. and panic. And so, you know, again, remember that 1% shift, you know, is all we're asking for you to invest in yourself um, and your family. Hey there, it's Robin, and you're listening to the Healthy Habits for Midlife Mamas. This podcast is all about you, your health, your wellness, and making those 1% shifts that can transform your life one step at a time. Here, we're going to explore simple, holistic strategies to help you thrive and not just survive in this beautiful midlife chapter. Whole foods and movement to mindset shifts and spiritual grounding, I'm going to guide you through all of it so that you can feel your best inside and out. If you are ready to reclaim your energy and make wellness a priority, you're in the right place. And if you're loving what you hear, don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a review. It helps me and you to reach more women just like us. Now, let's dive in and see what we can find. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. So excited to be back on today with Sharon. We are in episode four, which um, today we're going to be talking about when it comes to breast cancer prevention, we've talked about the bathroom products, what to avoid. We've given you some tools um, on how to get some of the products that you currently have uh, to see where they're at toxic wise and non-toxic wise. And so today we're going to kind of pivot a little bit and we're going to talk about cleaning products, stuff in your kitchen, um, and just some areas to really be conscious of where you might not think these things are hiding. So welcome back, Sharon. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I am loving our conversations together. <laughs> it's awesome. It's always fun. Um, when I was thinking about putting together this cleaning list of ingredients, um, some of the things that I wanted to mention, fragrance again, because anything that has a fragrance in it is an endocrine disruptor, and you just don't want to be using that um, on your clothes. Or think about your sheets, you know, you're sleeping on these things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So fragrance is always going to be top of my list for throwing things out that doesn't make sense. So yeah. is that similar for you? Yeah, 100%. I totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, but phthalates, I wanted to talk a little bit about phthalates because it's not as known what that is. What I learned is that it hides in synthetic fragrances mostly. Um, what have you learned? Yeah, I agree. I, from what my understanding is, is that in synthetic fragrances, there could be phthalates, um, which are endocrine risk disruptors. They and are. They're also, um, our experience was a, a respiratory. So upper respiratory, respiratory. um, it, it, was one of the things that we were told to ditch with my one daughter um, because mm -hmm. she had a lot of upper respiratory issues. Um, that was something that our you know naturopath told us that we should avoid. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like the the confusing thing about phthalates is it may not say on the ingredient list the word yeah. phthalate. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably going to say fragrance. And cool. um, my understanding is that a lot of the times, maybe not all the time, but a lot of the times that phthalates can be hidden under that umbrella term. Right. So that's just good to kind of know, because when you are scanning, if you don't see it, but you see the word fragrance, just remember, you know, when we talk about the hundreds of chemicals that is hidden in that loophole word, phthalates is just one of them. Yeah. Um, and then triclosan, you know, that antibacterial product, it's a hormone disruptor, you know, but B it's, it's a chemical that, you know, remember when you're putting this stuff on, you know, through hand soap or through antibiotic, it's going directly into your bloodstream. So triclosan is definitely one on the top of my list that I'm always like, if it has that, it's a no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I agree. Um, and then bleach, that was another thing that uh, when I was originally starting to get into this side of things that my naturopath was like, you know, anything that has bleach definitely is linked to upper respiratory issues. Um, and the, she was saying it was because it was from like the toxic gases. So when you mix it with other chemicals, it creates mm. like a, um, but it's, uh, an invisible gas, I guess is what, how she explained it to me. And so ingesting that. So if you have upper respiratory issues, I would say, you know, check some of your products and just see what is lurking in them, because it might be something that you might want to ditch and trade up. Um, and then formaldehyde, we were just having this discussion before we started recording, but formaldehyde, um, most of us know that it's not good. I mean, when we hear it, but um, it is a carcinogen and it is in a lot of things. 
but as um, Sharon was pointing out, they're not always, it's not always listed as formaldehyde. So can you explain what you were telling me before? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually have a friend who was having a ton of, of skin issues and very severe skin issues. And through a lot of, I don't know, trial and error and work with her doctor, she learned that she is allergic to formaldehyde. Um, but like you said, it probably isn't going to say formaldehyde on the, um, I almost said the recipe list <laughs> on the ingredient <laughs> list. Um, so there are a bunch of different chemicals, which I think maybe we might be better off just listing them for you than us trying to pronounce them. Yes, um, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that um, that can you know contain either contain formaldehyde or they're considered formaldehyde releasers, which means it might just be a completely different chemical compound. Um, but when it's mixed, you know, like you mix chemical A with chemical B, you get chemical C, and chemical C might be formaldehyde. It it can get so tricky. I mean, there's no way any of us would just be able to look at a, a label and, you know, know, oh, I can't mix this and this together. Um, so that's why for me, it's so important to one, you know, start with those apps that we talked about that are helpful and just, you know, just a quick scan, but also to find um, either a DIY product that you can make easily and you know what you're putting in it and you know that it's safe um, or find a company that you really trust. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a few of those um, as we go along, but um, I was just thinking when you were talking about all this, it, you know, it, Sharon and I were very dialed into the, you know, personal care products and it's not that we're not dialed into, but the, the list is different on yeah. cleaning products, but the apps that we provided you guys does both. And I think again, just general rule of thumb, if you see fragrance, you know, if you see triclosan, if you see phthalates, if you see SLS, if you see certain little words that yes. don't really sound like real things, then look them up and see what they are. But yeah. again, um, there are a few different companies that I have tried along the way. And I, for right now, I sit with Molly Suds. Um, mm -hmm. sh her products, not only are they safe, but they're also effective. And I think that's important. But one of the things I wanted to talk about, because I think that laundry detergent is super tricky because we all think that we want our clothes to smell good. And one of the things that I learned is that in order for the for the fragrance to stay on your clothes, there's microplastics that are in the fragrance itself. And so when, if you think about it, it <clears throat> when it sticks to your clothes, it's actually sticking because there's a microplastic. So not only are you wearing a fragrance that's toxic, you now have mm -hmm. microplastics all over the place. And if you're thinking about again, your clothes that you wear on your legs when you shave or, you know, your, your underwear or, you know, things it's going directly into your bloodstream. So there's a lot of statistics about us carrying microplastics in our body and in our brain. And so I'm just saying that for me, that just is another reason why you should avoid fragrance. But when you're looking at natural, more safe, healthy products, you're not going to get the same smell on your clothes. And I think that's just a shift in your mindset and an adjustment to being okay with not having florally smelled clothes. And also think about the fact that you're just inhaling that all day, 24 hours a day, you're sleeping on your sheets, you're doing all of the things. So when I think about like cleaning products, that's my very first thing that I try and coach people to switch. Because if yep. you think about how often you're wearing your clothes, which is most of the time, um, and again, you sleep on your sheets for eight hours or whatever a night. And so um, it's one of the bigger products that I say to get switched up. Once you make that switch and you've, and you've gone with either something without a fragrance or it has a natural scent to it, you are not going to miss the synthetic fragrance at all. And in <laughs> fact, you're going to walk down the laundry aisle at your grocery and store like, and be like, oh, <laughs> it's so true. I'm so sensitive to smells now because yeah. I just don't include them, you know, in our life. The other trick around that is if you want your clothes to have a light scent is in your dryer. If you use wool balls, you can put a little bit of essential oil onto the wool ball and it does make your clothes smell nice. And it depends on whatever scent you use, obviously. But, um, so in the fall, I like to use like a cinnamon and it just gives it a little bit of a, you know, but it's not like overpowering or overbearing. Um, yeah. A lot of this stuff is just trial and error and then finding a company. The other thing I really love about Molly Suds is they have um, an athletic wear mm -hmm. um, style of their um, detergent. And I find it to be very effective. 
my husband runs and his clothes stink. And so that with a little bit of vinegar and, you know, we're good to go and, and everything comes out smelling good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I recently saw a reel from a woman that lives, I think it's part of Norway, but it's so far North that it's like as close to the North pole as you can get without being, you know, at the North pole. And she does all of these, these reels and, and this information about her life in the Arctic. And one of the things that she talked about is how year round winter, spring, summer, fall, she sets her sheets out and her, you know, her bedding um, outside to, you know, freshen up. And I thought, well, how can you do that? I live in New Hampshire. So, I mean, I couldn't do that in the winter, obviously same as her, but what she was saying was she dries them indoors in a dryer, but then still sets them outside to just freshen up. And I started doing that and it is so nice. And my daughter even just mentioned it randomly the other day. She was like, can you put my sheets outside again? <laughs> so that's another very simple way, you know, do your laundry as normal, ideally using, you know, toxin-free detergent, dry it inside if you need to, if it's not a, you know, a nice day, but then you can just set them outside for an hour on your deck or, you know, wherever, if you have a space outside, it, it's so so nice. And I, I would imagine that would help to, you know, air out some of the toxins that might be, you know, in the fabric from previous yeah, washes, from previous washes, from what it's mm -hmm. made from and all of that. I like, that's a lovely idea. And I'm going to try that and see how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll let you know. So the other thing, the two things that I really feel are super important for, um, like kitchen and, um, also laundry and stuff is BPA and PFAS. And so BPA, um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the word because it's super long and crazy, mm -hmm. but um, it was in plastics and it's in linings of cans and it's toxic. Um, so there are now companies that make BPA free lined cans. And you'll even notice even on some baggies, it will say BPA free. So, you know, just in the fashion of our crazy world. Um, what they did was they've taken BPAs out, but now they are adding in what's called PFOS, which they, they call a forever chemical. And that is what is on Teflon pans also, which is why um, we suggest that you, you know, dump those. But back to the baggy thing, if you can get away from plastic in your kitchen um, and go to, you know, glass um, where for like Tupperwares, you know, uh, yep. I guess storage containers, if yep. you can do glass. I even have some that I just recently purchased that have a bamboo top instead of a plastic top. And if you are using a plastic top, you know, no judgment, no shame, just let your food cool down first before you put the lid on, because yep. when it's hot, you're basically um, leaching out some of that plastic into your food, which is why in ovens and microwaves and toaster ovens, you're not supposed to put um, plastic because it ends up you know, leaching, which is just uh, a way of saying that it omits into the air and basically gets into your food. Yeah. Yeah. And what is your feeling on some of that stuff? Um, yeah. What have I, you done to change? I agree with all of that. So we do have glassware. We still have the plastic lids. And for a long time, I don't know, I'll get your thoughts on this. We didn't talk about this. <laughs> we didn't talk about this ahead of time, Robin. That's fine. For a long time, I wouldn't put the plastic lids in the dishwasher. I like hand washed them but now I'm getting kind of lax. So do you know anything about that? So I, it's just so interesting that you say that because the other day, I don't know what I was reading, but it was saying that when you put plastic in your dishwasher, the heat of the dishwasher then makes the plastic leach mm. and it gets on your other dishes and such and whatever. And I thought, you know, there's the happy medium and there's the balance, you know? And so yep. I'm not going to say I'm never going to put plastic in there again, but I try and put it on the top shelf. Yeah. So all Same. plastic I just put at the top instead of at the bottom where I may have I mean the only plastic stuff we typically have would be lids um yeah. if we st still have those and then um you know a couple of like turvis tumblers or whatever but most yeah. of our stuff are stainless steel or glass at this point yeah um, so. yeah that was that was one area where I had to just let it go because nobody was washing the lids and right. they were just you know <laughs> Well, you, know, you can't put the bamboo. Up. Well, you can't put the bamboo ones in the dishwasher either. Oh, so I do yeah. hand wash those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, you know, it's do what you can when yeah. you can, and then the little that you don't, it's going to be okay. You know, it's yeah. it's you know, don't leave yeah. live in fear, but just right. You know, do what you can when you can. Right. Um, so one other spot yeah. that I that I was just thinking of that is a, a sneaky place where we come in contact with BPA is store receipts. So oh gosh, yes. 
you know, you know how they feel like, I guess it depends on the paper that they use, but you know how they feel kind of like waxy almost. I think mm -hmm. that's what that, I think that's where the BPA comes in contact with. It you. is. And I actually researched it because someone said that to me and I was like, well, is it the ink or is it the actual mm. paper? It's the actual paper, the paper. So yeah. I don't know why. I mean, it's kind of silly, but you know, I mean, the person I heard that was talking about, I was like, yeah, I never take, my sister doesn't take a receipt either. Um, so, you know, I will ask for it digitally if possible, but yeah. if not, I will touch it and just wash my hands. You know, I just, yeah. so again, it's the happy medium, but just being aware, being aware yeah. if you're just, you know, crumpling and holding onto your, you know, receipt or whatever you have it in your purse and you just keep touching it and you're touching, you just know that they have, you know, it has a chemical on it that you might want to avoid um, yeah. if you can. Yeah. So um, a couple of the products, well, first of all, the other thing with Tupperware, we were talking about glass, we were talking about bamboos, and then we were talking about silicone because yeah, silicone, yeah. to my knowledge um, so far, is something that doesn't leach mm -hmm. and you can get it hot. Um, mm -hmm. Is that what you learned also? Yes. Although, and I'm not well versed in this, but I, my understanding is that there are different levels or different grades of yes. silicone. Yeah. So, um, like I know they sell, you know, little silicone, um, muffin wrappers, you know, so you yes. don't have to, they're reusable. Um, and I actually bought some at one point, but then I thought, oh, I don't know. It was, you know, I bought it at like a, a lower end store and I'm like, I don't know what kind of silicone this is. Yeah, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I, I do remember there, there is a list that I remember seeing. Great. So I will look and see. Um, when we were talking about, we talked about like serving spoons um, and going from that plastic. Um, again, if you think about using the the serving spoons or like making something with hot oven or hot, you know, pot on the stove, and then you're putting that particular item into the hot, you know, consistency, it will just leach Poop off or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So stainless steel, bamboo were, you know, a couple that we talked about. Um, pots and pans, we were saying, obviously no Teflon because that has the forever chemicals in it. So, um, some of the swaps that we talked about were cast iron, um, stainless steel, yeah. and we were even talking about the stoneware. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Being a, a good alternative, um, yeah. to, to the Teflon or just yeah. a regular pan. Um, let's see for baggies. There are cloth baggies, which I know some people are going to poo poo on and all of that, but they're just options, right? So if you, you know, want to have something different for your kids, um, they have sandwich ones and snack ones sizes. Yeah. Um, and if you kind of think outside the box, like, okay, chips don't always have to go in a baggie or a sandwich doesn't have to go in a baggie. You could put it in your glass container, you know, assuming your lunchbox correct. is big enough to accommodate that, you know, but for me, it's just a, a mind switch. I've got to think, okay, not everything that I grew up having in a baggie has to go in a baggie. Yes. So I, I agree with you. And I, I honestly um, just try not to buy them a lot. And yeah. my husband was like, can we just get some baggies in the house? <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a baggie, a box of them and I put his name on it. I said, these are just for you. And so yeah. one day I, I needed it and he was like, nope, you can't use my baggies. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, you know, just the also, what I think is cool for lunches now, they have the metal boxes, they've got mm -hmm. the bento boxes, they've got other alternatives, but again, just you know, within reason, do what's in your budget, but there yeah. all are, there are alternatives even for budget-friendly, you know, families. Absolutely. Um, when we were talking about dishwasher and dish soap, a couple of brands that we recommended, um, well, for the dishwasher, the ones that I have found that work is Molly Suds and then Blue Land. And then do you have any other, I think we, uh, the unscented seventh generation. If, yeah. If have I think that store. one's, you know, maybe not top of the list. Up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I definitely want to try the, the Molly suds. I haven't tried. Well, like we talked about, I had the, um, the lemon scented, not fragrance, but lemon scented Molly suds. And it was a little too strong for me, just, you know, having, you know, really no sense for, for so long, it was a little bit too much, but they do have an unscented. So that's what I want to try next. Okay. Yeah. That's the one that, that I have currently. Yeah. Um, and then dish soap, the Dr. Bronner's, um, the Blue Land also has a dish soap. And then- Leora, I think it's pronounced. That's the one that I use. That's a bar, which took a little bit of getting used to because I'm used to, you know, squeezing out the bottle and getting the liquid dish soap, but it's actually very easy. I just have the bar sitting on 
wooden dish thing. And um, I just kind of pick up the whole thing and, and put it on my wash cloth and then I can wash the dishes and it suds up. It's, it's, it's fine. Nobody in my family has complained about it. So. Hmm, I'm definitely going to try that. That sounds interesting. So use your apps, use the tools that we gave you so that you guys can see what yours currently at home rates, and then try and find some swaps and alternatives. And the other thing I want to say is share. If you have something that you know, you know, let us know what it is so that we can add it to the list. Cause this list is always going to be evolving. I even found another company today that I'm going to put in for personal care products, which was zebra and they do floss De uh, deodorant hmm. and um, toothpaste. And nice. um, she was really, she had some very interesting takes on the things um, that she created and why she created them. So I I'm actually just ordered them so I can try them, but I'm going to put that in the list too. So this list is always going to be evolving as we learn and grow. And so if you have something, please let us know because we'll add it to the list because this is for everybody to help everybody else. Um, Water cups was another area that we talked about going glass obviously is great. Um, but when it comes to the take along water bottles and things, you know, you do have to be careful of BPA. You do have to be careful of lead. You have to be careful of, you know, certain things that companies are not thinking about. And so a couple of the ones that I researched is Hydro Flask, Owala, and Quartzicle. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any other ones that you guys use? No, I would agree with all of those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I will say um, along the lines of of water cups and for something at home would be straws. So mm. if you're, you know, a straw mm -hmm. drinker, you know, think think about maybe swapping out a plastic straw for, um, I, I know they have glass straws. I prefer the stainless steel with the silicone top on the top. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a yeah. flexible mm -hmm. um, because I, I feel like they could actually be a, a hazard. <laughs> you know, it's like this this hard, you know, stainless steel or glass straw. So I like that it has the little flexible top and you can take that off and wash it. Um, but that's a nice, easy, swipe, safe swap as well. And it really does save you money in the long run if that's something that you use frequently. Yes. And I know that um, they do sell them in packs, the ones that you're talking about that are, that have the silicone top on it. Um, yeah. I typically use glass or um, the stainless steel. But yeah. there are also straws that are BPA free that, you know, that have a good rating on them. I don't remember the brand right now. So for smoothies, we have a few of those um, only because we needed fatter straws because you can't really oh. suck a th smoothie through a thin straw unless you really want to work out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. So, uh, okay. We have a couple more. So detergent, I already talked about Molly Suds. We talked about the wool dryer balls and then for an alternative for bleach, France Basics has a really good, it's called Oxy Boost. Um, and also just plain old vinegar. Vinegar, mm -hmm. guys, it's like a miracle worker. Um, before mm -hmm. there was all these companies, there was just vinegar and, you know, Castile oil or something. There was different yeah. little things like that. We've just gotten into a very, um, so society's taken it to the next level where you have to have one cleaner for this and one cleaner for that and this cleaner for that. And ultimately you don't really. It's just a way to make a lot of money. And so if you have 20 million things under your cabinet and you're like, how am I going to replace all of this? You're going to quickly find that one product can do a lot of things. Um, and that's the one thing I do love about Branch Basics um, is that just like kind of Bron like Dr. Bronner's, it yep. comes in a concentrated form and then they give you bottles and you can make a solution for your counters, a solution for the bathroom and a solution for your windows. And it gives you the ratio of like water to vinegar to their product or whatnot. So um, A, it's less waste because you're, you're not throwing away the reusable bottles all the time. And it takes a long time to use the, the actual um, concentration of the formula because it's, it's very potent. So they give you a lot, you just use a little. So um, yeah. I kind of have gotten my mindset switch to if I can find like an all-in-one type of thing like that, it just makes life um, a little bit easier. But I was super excited. I think you're the one that told me that um, Molly Suds has a toilet cleaner that, because um, I think that's been one of our biggest struggles in this house. Uh, we just have hard water, I guess. And so mm -hmm. like keeping the toilet clean just seems like a chore. And mm -hmm. with the natural stuff, I just couldn't really find one that was really working super well. So I did a lot of 
finagling and con- concocting of things <laughs> to get it. So yeah. when yeah. I saw that Molly Suds actually like has its own thing, I, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to definitely. Yeah. Um, Blue Land has one also. And then you were saying just baking soda and vinegar. Yeah. Which makes it kind of a fun science experiment too, because you'll get that, you know, little volcano suds up when you <laughs> add the two together into the toilet. And <laughs> But I can see how that works because it's acidic yep. versus um, yep. the baking soda, you know? Yep. Yeah. So I love that. Um, for floor cleaners, um, Dr. Bronner's branch basics, and then a good, just vinegar and water and essential oils. I think we just feel like everything has to be made by somebody. Um, and then counters, you were saying you had, let's see, which all of this is going to be in the guide guys. So you don't have to like freak out and write all this down, but what was your little mixture for? Yeah. My mixture is I just have, um, a glass spray bottle. I don't know how big it is. 16 ounces, 32 ounces, whatever. And, uh, fill it with water. And then I put in like 20 drops of some kind of disinfecting essential oil. Um, you had mentioned thieves, um, um, Oh, oh, on guard, or you could even just use lemon essential oil. Um, there's so many different DIYs. I mean, you could even just save your lemon peels and your orange peels, you know, and put it in a bottle of vinegar on your countertop and let it sit for, you know, a week to three weeks or whatever, and then strain it and put that in a glass bottle. And now you've got, you know, your citrus scented vinegar solution. Um, and you know, those, those citrus fruits are are so great at degreasing and, um, you know, cleaning countertops, floors, you know, all, all the things that we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if you're like, well, where do you guys get your essential oils from and things like that? Um, Dutera, what she just said, um, Pure Haven has some good ones. Revive has a really good um, few that I like. And then Cling Organics. Hmm. I found them a couple years ago. I like some of their blends also. But, you know, tea tree oil is a great one for antibacterial, yeah. antifungal. Um, so if you're wanting to like scrub a bathroom, I you know, um, On Guard has, um, and Thieves, those have, it's a combination of things in them. Um, yep. So it attacks a few different things. So that's why we mentioned those. The last little area I wanted to touch on, which I know is super big for a lot of people is candles because, you know, we like things to smell good and we like candles and they, most of the time they do smell good, but what they admit in the air is, is not great. And Mm -hmm. so again, we go back to fragrance, we go back to phthalates, we go back to things that are being, you know, you know, admitted that are, you know, carcinogens and they are endocrine disruptors. And so there are brands though that have them that are not made from petroleum, right? They're made from a good wax. Their um, little wick is also not made from anything synthetic. And then they yep. get the smell through essential oils. So a two candle companies that I thought of off the top of my head was Grow Fragrance and then Ro Casa. Pure Haven does have a couple of candles. Um, if you haven't tried a diffuser before, they're so fun because you can make holiday blends. You know, you can, you can make a blend that you just like. And so I love to mix and do like my little science experiment to see like, and then when the kids come in, they're like, oh, it smells like, you know, and it's like, <laughs> what did you put in there? So again, I think we have to get away from just thinking candles for scents and also mm-hmm. think about diffusers um, and diffusers, depending on what you're diffusing can also clean the air in your house. So it's, yeah. it's not just for smells. There's actually, you know, a benefit to, to using it other than that. Yeah. Yeah. And they can clean the air and also help you health wise. Right. I mean, some of like, if you're diffusing frankincense, for example, that's a, that's a great essential oil that's useful for so many different things. And I, I believe just by inhaling it, you know, you're getting some of those benefits as well. Yeah, sure. For sure. And yeah, that's a whole nother conversation we can get into another day, but how you use essential oils, there's tons of different ways for different, you know, things in inhalation versus topical versus uh, a mixture and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the whole point in doing this series and today, you know, going over some of these things is that there's possibilities, right? There's a lot of possibilities out there and so many options. And we just want you guys to think more on a proactive preventative mindset rather than just waiting for something to happen and then have to be reactive Mm -hmm. and panic. 
And so, you know, again, we're just trying to paint the picture that it is possible, that there are a lot of options and that there, there are tools out there to help minimize the overwhelm that sometimes comes with switching things over. So remember that 1% shift, you know, is all we're asking for you to invest in yourself um, and your family. So um, I guess in talking to you, which we didn't talk about this, what were some of your first changes that you made um, after finding out about your mom's diagnosis and that you've kind of built upon, you know, because obviously we can't switch everything overnight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Financially and, you know, mentally, it's, it's impossible to switch mm -hmm. everything. Right. I would say deodorant was my, probably my first swap for personal care products. And we talked about the reasons why, you know, head yep. armpits and groin and all that stuff. So our, um, deodorant was my first swap there. And then in house products, I bet it was, um, I, I, I started making my own cleaners with just water and vinegar. And it's so funny because the first time I did it, I didn't add any essential oils. It was just water and vinegar and I'm cleaning the countertops. And my husband goes, Oh, that smells so toxic. <laughs> and it was just so ironic because yeah, vinegar has a strong scent, yeah. but it's not toxic. Right. So it was That's just funny hilarious. that he used that word. Um, my first experience for household stuff was um, Delaney was three, I think, three or four. She no, she was actually probably four, but she she literally just had a cold and a cold. I mean, she just had colds all the time, and but she never had like struck. She never had any like bacterial. It was, it was just always a viral, viral, viral. And yeah. so finally, I was like, she was snoring and all this stuff. Well, anyways, her adenoids were really enlarged, mm. um, but she had some testing done, and and the provider was like you know, she, she has what's called non-allergic rhinitis and basically she's allergic to toxic scents. So mm. I was like, what the heck is that? That's like all over the world. Like, what am I going to do with this kid? Put her in a bubble. Yeah. And so that was my first, like, oh my gosh, I have to look at all of our products. You know, like, what am I going to put in place? And so at that time method had just come out from target mm. or, or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is so awesome. Like somebody's doing better for us, you know, blah, blah, blah. Little yeah. did I know how to read ingredients at that time. Yeah. But I came in and I was like, all the candles left the house, all the cleaning product, everything left the house. I used only method for like the countertop and the floor. And it definitely did help. Um, but then somebody turned me on to Shackley um, in my mm -hmm. mom's group. And so that was a concentrated little thing. And so I started to use that. And again, I wasn't into essential oils at that time. So I was like, this smells weird. Like, you know, it was mm -hmm. just like a very hard smell. Um, and then probably within that year, somebody was like, oh, you just add essential oils. And I was like, I can't believe I'm acting like these moms. I don't know how to make things, you know, like, yeah. And I just remember, <laughs> and then, you know, once you start getting into it and getting used to it, it was, it was fine. But um, that was, that was a huge eye opener. And then Ansley had, again, at that point, I hadn't even really changed detergents. I think mm -hmm. I went to like a, like a clear or whatever, something like that, that says yeah. it didn't yeah. have fragrance. Free and clear. Did. Right. Yeah. Um, and I remember Ansley, she kept getting UTIs like at a young age and, mm. and they were like, you know, maybe it's something with her urethra, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what are you talking about? So, um, I think this was kind of around the time where, um, we got introduced to Pure Haven. And mm -hmm. so Sandy was like, my sister, Robin, I just read this article and it says that, you know, Thai detergent and a lot of detergents have fragrance in them, even if they don't say they have fragrance. And so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, let me look at my bottle. And I was like, sure enough, it had fragrance. I was like, oh. So then I, that's when I started honing in on that. And I, when I talk to people, so many people learn similar lessons in the same yeah. way, Yeah. yet we don't have a big enough voice to be heard by everybody yet. Yeah. But I, I know it's coming. Change is coming. Yeah. I feel it. Um, there's a lot of stuff moving and shaking in, in the world that I look at and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, for you guys listening, I hope that these four episodes really kind of not only gave you some confidence, um, but some courage to take a step in the direction of, you know, revamping a few of your personal care products, as well as your, you know, home care products in really just all honesty, just really to create better health and wellness for you and your family. You're yeah. shaking your head. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you had more to add. One thing that I wanted to say when you were talking about your daughters and how it can be overwhelming for us is that once you kind of get the ball rolling, it's not so, it's not so hard. It kind of comes second nature, but then specifically for our kids or, you know, the next generation, if they grow up with us, you know, using water and vinegar, if that's just normal. And I'm Correct. really hopeful that that means 
that the next generation and the generation after that is only going to, you know, get more quote unquote natural, um, you know, and, and start thinking, oh, I can, I can make this product myself or, um, you know, why would I use bleach like that? You know, right. Well, it's so interesting you say that because my older daughter who's in college one day, she called and she's like, I'm trying to find, um, you know, something in the grocery store for the kitchen to clean the counters. So she's mm-hmm. like, and I, I don't know what to buy. Can you help me like decipher? And I was like, well, don't you, don't you have that big bottle of vinegar we bought? And she was like, yeah. And I said, well, and you have your essential oils. Right. And she said, yeah. And I said, well, you just get some distilled water. I said, just make this concoction or whatever. And look at that. You can save five bucks. It's, it can be a money saver because you're using kind of what you have around your house um, yeah. and not feeling like you're not cleaning well. I think those are all just really cool things to discover along the way. But I, I am in line with you that if we just lead by example, hopefully, you know, they're going to make their own decisions and their own choices, but hopefully at, at some point they'll either continue some of them or come back to them when needed, when, yeah. you know, they're looking for other alternatives. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, Thank you guys so much for joining Uh, in the show notes. I'm going to drop again, the workbook so that you can take it along with you, share it with your friends, just know that it will get updated. Um, So come back and check it time to time because it'll be a live document, um, which is super cool to have um, for you guys as you go. And also one of the other things is in the workbook on one of the very last pages, I do drop a breast cancer prevention um, link to an organization that I feel like really stands for prevention over, you know, reaction. And and they do have a section that if you have been diagnosed or you have had a diagnosis in the past, so they do, you know, they talk about all of it, but a large part of their website is um, about prevention. And I I just, I like it as a resource. So I'm sharing that with you guys as well. Um, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week, rest of your October. Thank you, Sharon, for coming on also. Thank you so much. That episode had so many great takeaways. I hope you feel inspired and more empowered to make small 1% shifts on your wellness journey this week. I'd love to hear what resonated with you. If you want to leave a review, share your thoughts, and let me know how you're going to be implementing these 1% shifts into your life. And don't forget to subscribe and share this episode with another mama who could use a little wellness love. Want to stay connected? Join me on Instagram and Facebook at Live Life Balanced with Robin. Check out my website at Live Life Balanced with Robin for more resources and grab yourself some freebies while you're there. Until next time, I hope you find peace, love, and light by breathing, being present, and allowing for all possibilities to come forward. See y'all next week. Love to y'all.